thanks so much for joining us. We will get started now today. My name is Carolyn and I'm with the Career Connections team here at the Insurance Institute of Canada. And I'm very excited that you've all joined us today for our networking masterclass. So the Insurance Institute hosts a few different workshops throughout the year on different skills or with different speakers where we're highlighting different areas of the industry. And today I'm very excited because we have two wonderful speakers from the industry with lots of really great experience. And they're going to share with us some of their tips and tricks for networking and also some of their past experiences and some of their stories. So it should be a really great session. As we're going through, if you have questions, please type them into the chat. We find that's the easiest way to do it. And then uh, we'll try and answer some of your questions as we're going through. But otherwise, let's get started. So I'm going to do a brief introduction of our panelists today, and then we will get to hear from each of them. So starting off with Renee Lea Susi, she's the Senior Manager Commercial Lines at Cooperators General Group of Companies, and she's located in Laval in Quebec. Probably why she's not watching any Raptors. That's fine. We'll we'll let it slide. So Renee Lea has extensive insurance experience with over 10 years in call centers and agencies. She started at the Cooperators in 20, 2009, pardon me, and has since risen through the ranks to become in 2017 the district manager. In 2019, she was promoted to senior manager business insurance development and manages a team of 20 employees. Since obtaining her CIP designation in 2011, she's been involved with the Insurance Institute of Canada. She's been a member of the CIP Society National Council since 2019. And she is also recently the uh, award winner for our Emerging Leaders Award. So very excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And we also have Tisha Hamid, who is the Client Services Manager for BFL Canada. Tisha began her insurance career as a summer student, that's pretty cool, at the Guaranteed Company of North America, where she was then recruited to the broker side. She gained her 25 plus years of experience through different brokerages, pardon me, working in various areas from surety, property and casualty programs, risk management, and then she ended up back in surety, a niche that she really enjoys. She is ever present at industry events, so lots of networking events for Tisha, and she is also the vice president of the Young Insurance Professionals of Toronto and serves on the SAC, which is the Surety Association of Canada DEI Committee. So welcome to you both. Thank you so much for joining us. As I said earlier, if you have questions for our wonderful panelists, please go ahead and enter them in the chat, but we will get started. Renee, Lea, I'm going to start with you if you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the industry. Yeah, thank you. So I'm in the industry since already 21 years. Uh, I began my career in the insurance industry just because my father was in the insurance industry. So I was going to follow his path. So I began as a sales advisor and two years later, I seized the opportunity to become a leader. Uh, I became a leader for a team, uh, a supervisor, like uh, as a team in a team in the ACC call center. And I can say right now, it's never too early uh, in our career to achieve our goal. It's uh, it takes different step, uh, and that was my first step to uh, to achieve the goal that I had to become a manager. So as you explained uh, previously, now I'm a senior manager for the commercial instruments and development uh, for cooperators. And uh, I still have some uh, some goal for my career. That's great. Thank you so much. And Tisha, if you want to tell us a little bit about how you got started. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, well, you know, as uh, Kellen said that I started as a summer student. It was more of, you know, you come out of straight university, um, you, you know, your parents don't want you to be idle. And so my mom <laughs> found me this, uh, she had a friend at the guarantee company in HR. Um, and so it was a, a, a perfect fit. Um, and through that, actually, um, 
unfortunately they didn't have a job for me, but some brokers were recruiting and the ladies there had taken it upon themselves to adopt me as their daughter. And they were determined to find me a job. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how I got started from there. Um, I went on to the broker side and to be honest, I left a little bit for, for about seven years, did a little bit of uh, risk management, but came back to the broker side um, and back into surety, which is um, a niche that I, I truly enjoy. So that's great. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, what was your undergraduate degree in? <laughs> Psychology. <laughs> Psychology. Oh, okay. Do, do you feel yes, like that's yeah. helped you in the industry and helped you with? Uh, I mean, I think it, it helps me for sure. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of business social psychology. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I started off with economics and law and then I had psych as a elective and to my parents' dismay, I fell in love with it. Um, and so, um, but I did a lot of social and uh, business psychology, which mm -hmm. I do believe helps me when relating and networking, you know, to read people and read a room. That's so. great. Yeah. So Tisha, I'm going to stay with you and staying oh, yeah. on that kind of same theme of young Tisha, fresh out of university <laughs> with her psychology <laughs> degree. What <laughs> advice would you give to her? So if you could hop in your DeLorean and go back in time, what would you tell yeah. that, that Tisha? Gosh, this is always the, I always find this question very tough. Um, but I feel like um, I would say, don't be afraid to, to ask questions and to talk to people. I know it can, people can be very intimidating, um, especially when you're new in a career, um, but you've gotten where you've gotten for a re where you have for a reason. Um, you have the skill sets. It's just that because a lot of times when you're freshly in a new career, um, or coming out of university, um, or have it, you know, you've been in the industry for one or two years, you feel intimidated because obviously you're surrounded by all of these great, this great wealth of knowledge and people that have been there for years or whatever the case may be. Um, I, I mean, I feel like that's what they're there for. And you're not expected to know everything or figure everything out on your own. So I always say, I would say to me, to younger me, don't be afraid to talk or ask questions, uh, talk to people, or ask questions. That's great. Yeah. I think um, very common when you're starting out, you are a little bit more nervous and uh, you don't want to embarrass yourself, but that's really the best way to learn. And everyone else was in the same position at one point as well, right? Exactly. Everyone had to get started. Everybody somewhere. had to start. Yeah. And yeah. the most they can say is no for, you know, yeah. like I would say that whenever somebody asks me, I'm like, well, the most they can say is no you know, yes. um, and it, you take it all as a learning experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's what I would say. That's great. Okay. And Renee, Leah, how about you? What would you go back in time and tell yourself? I would say a little bit same as uh, Tisha, ask question. Like uh, we, we, sometimes we feel shy. We don't want to disturb others. And uh, we are like, oh, I just began on my career. Should I ask those questions? Yes, it's never too early to ask the question. So I seized the opportunity two years after I got in the industry. And for me, it was a challenge. So I will say after that, I was like sometimes uh, taking a break and telling like, I don't know everything about this project. So I, I will give the chance to other where they are more in control, but put yourself on some project where you don't know anything. That's where you're gonna learn the most. Like uh, you don't know about technology, the technology they want yeah. to implement. Go ahead, you know, you're gonna learn, you're gonna ask the, the question and it's gonna be like a great contribution and you're gonna make new contact. So that's what uh, I will tell me, like if I have yeah. to go back. Yes. That's great. So uh, Renee, Leah, I'll stay with you. And this next question is, uh, as we know, the industry is quite tight knit and it is very social as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. How has networking been important to you and how has it benefited your career? Um, I'm, I'm a people person. Uh, so I see to have those contact with people, uh, it can be a little contact, you know, not really like the person with who I directly work, but to have like uh, some people all around, like different departments uh, help me and support me in my career. Because sometimes it's just because they know you, they will be on a project and they will say, let me think I have someone maybe could 
could be interested like uh, to uh, to be involved on this project. So they came and they just grabbed me like <laughs> and to to uh, to be on a new project or something different. Uh, I also started to get involved in the insurance with the insurance institute by giving my name uh, to do exam. Uh, Proctoring, like just mm -hmm. to watch the person who were writing the exam. Yeah. That was my first uh, step with the Insurance Institute. And then like I asked questions to the person who were there. And then I said, I'm, I I told them that I was interested to uh, to participate in different projects. So this really helped me like to grow over the year. And I'm now involved in different projects where I couldn't imagine that I could do in the past. And now that you're in sort of more of a leadership position, you know, I assume you are also doing the same with people on your team or people that you encounter with volunteering. You're, you're sort of thinking of them and recommending them for different opportunities as well. That's a great comment. Exactly. I And I try to ask people like what they are their goal, like asking simple questions mm -hmm. uh, can help also like, uh, so don't be shy to answer those questions really with what you have in your mind. What is your real goal? Uh, it's, uh, it's, we don't have to be shy to have appetite for the future yeah. of our career. So yeah. yes. Yeah. You're really in charge of your career. No one else is going to do it for you. So, you know, Something else I might suggest is actually taking the time to think about what are those goals, maybe doing some career mapping. Um, the Insurance Institute actually has a really great resource for that on our website. It's called My Career, and it's a, a career progression sort of planning tool that you can use to look at sort of where you might want to go, what are some of the skills and experiences you might need, and then how you can work to develop them. So same thing. And, oh, sorry. I go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Find a mentor. I will say if you can have a mentor, mm -hmm. uh, this person will support you on your growth and give you some tip or so. Yeah, that's great. Okay, Tisha, same question for you. So how has networking within the industry been important to you and how has it benefited your career? I think you uh, you must make a good first impression if, if all the ladies <laughs> at the office from your first job were trying to find you, <laughs> find you a job. Yeah, or they just felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, like Renelia, I'm very, I'm such a people person. Um, I mean, I know, I remember growing up, I used to see my father, like, we'd be anywhere. He's a real estate agent and we would go, doesn't matter where we were, he would always strike a conversation with someone or talk to them and um I mean obviously at that time I was like it was so embarrassing it's like you know you're talking to strangers you know all these people and but um I look back at that now I'm like wow I'm just like I'm <laughs> just like him um I think network is so vital in um in in this industry um I mean I'm sure it's for everything else and you know um but with regards to this industry it's really vital we're such a people industry um driven person um uh network of um professionals then yeah um i feel like i'll give the story i love giving the story because i found that um one of when i first started the industry obviously I, you know i was shy i i didn't really speak to too many people or i was afraid um and one of my um directors took me out and we went to this event and she's like we are not leaving here until you make at least one contact you need to get at least one business card mm -hmm. and of course you know I stand there and I'm trying to like how do I approach this I'm in the corner I'm you know sweating and I'm like oh my gosh um it's such it can be very intimidating but I felt like it's great when you have people that can push you and challenge you um because most people will accept that challenge um and I'm a strong believer. I heard this the other day in a seminar. I was and um, I'm a very. I was like when I heard that, I'm like that's perfect. And the saying was that your network is your net worth, um, and that's so true because through obviously throughout all the networking that I've done, um, it's led me to where I am today. Um, it's led me to understand um, different uh, coverages, different aspects of insurance. Um, it's opened my eyes to um, different possibilities with it for my career. And you just never know where you're going to end up. Like mm -hmm. you, they say you change your career every five, like about five, at least five times in your, in your lifetime. And 
maybe less, maybe more, but it's through those connections that you make um, that you kind of learn, okay, well, there's opening here. Oh, I know someone that um, is looking for someone, you know, and um, sometimes, and it's so true what they say, it's, it's who you know. Um, that can get you into the door. So I feel it's like it's um, and whether to be honest, whether it's for your career, whether it's just to make friends within the industry, um, you know, to find people that are like minded or um, share the same passion um, are involved in like um, and different associations that somehow maybe down the line you may be interested in. It just it really opens the door for you to kind of yeah. explore um, and get to know people. That's great. Yeah. And I know Renee Lea mentioned that she did a lot of work with the the Institute. And I know that you also do uh, quite a bit of work with YIT or the Young Insurance Professionals of Toronto. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that association? So they, they do have sort of uh, chapters across Canada. It's not just Toronto. Well, we actually, it is just Toronto. We okay. have one from Ottawa. Yeah. So we're thinking of developing. I know there's, um, I think there's some names that are a little bit familiar or similar. So we kind of sometimes get associated with them. Okay. But um, with the Young Insurance or, uh, well, YIPT, um, as we call it. Um, I, yeah, I'm very passionate about it because I wish I had this when I started out. Um, and we understand, obviously, um, when you're in the new industry, sometimes you just need that little extra help or pull or push. Um, and that's what we try and do for individuals, whether it be um, we like to have fun, obviously, with um, networking events, socials. Um, but we also do very educational things like we have our mentorship program mm -hmm. um, and we do like speaker panels. Um, and, you know, as you, you know, Insurance uh, Institute has always been a, a supporter of ours and always see you there at those events. Um, but um, um, yeah, we try and um, help them along the way. We have ambassadors um, that are from different, uh, you know, companies, whether it be a broker or underwriter. And that's also a great way if you're new in the industry, um, we kind of encourage you to do that because then, A, you get to kind of meet your other um, colleagues, yeah. um, you know, and then uh, again, you know, bring someone new that's coming into your company, say, hey, I know, you know, this is going on. Why don't we come with me or come together and you know, and then it just kind of snowballs after that. So that's great. Yeah. And sometimes when you're nervous to go to some of those different events, finding a buddy mm -hmm. to yeah. go with makes For it sure. a lot more fun. And I, I think it gets you a lot more engaged within your career and the industry. So really great opportunity probably for, for some people on the call, perhaps who are mm -hmm. in some of the different cities or smaller towns across the country. You know, if you don't have an association like that in your city, there's definitely an opportunity for you perhaps to to start some sort of social club or something like that um, so that you can gather some of those people. And it is definitely a lot easier now that we have these social media tools as well. Sure. It definitely helps. Yeah. yeah. And that's how Yip got started, to be honest. The two co-founders, um, they both were from Hamilton. And when they came down to Toronto, like, we have no clue, but how do we get people together and associate and they just yeah. started this they started it just as a small group and you know look where we are today 10 uh yeah almost 10 years later so yeah that's great so you both mentioned that you're people persons people people mm -hmm. and uh you know sometimes I think when we think of networking we think of sort of the the big big events and then you see that one person maybe who seems to know everybody and is so chatty and social is going around shaking hands with everybody. Um, but that's not always everyone's style. So people have different personalities. Some people sort of don't find that as effective for them. So when it comes to building rapport and relationships with individuals or sort of smaller groups, what kind of suggestions would you have? And, and Tisha will continue with you. And then Renee, Leah, I'll come to you afterward. Yeah, that's, you know, um, you have to find a style that works for you. Now, I mean, the only way to do that is obviously kind of test out and don't be like everyone, don't be afraid to, you know, I don't want, I don't like to use the fist, the word or term fail. Um, it'll be challenging. Life, life, that's what happens. Life is, even for me at this stage, sometimes I still, you know, um, trying to figure things out or, or get nervous. Um, so you kind of have to play around with what works for you. But some suggestions I would say is, a, as you mentioned, take a buddy with you um, because that can um, obviously alleviate you feeling alone. 
but that buddy may also know other people and that you may meet along the way. So you're kind of intertwining each other's connections. Um, and also, I would say um, if you're approaching a group, obviously um, a smaller group is to start as much um, more less intimidating than a bigger group of people. Um, and sometimes it's just a simple conversation. It doesn't even have to be about a business. It could be, oh, oh I saw you or I, um, you know, from a different event. I just wanted to introduce myself and then maybe start off with, hey, how about those Raptors, <laughs> you know, or the weather or a sport, something along the line. It could be just a small little conversation. You don't have to dive deep into it and be like, oh, well, what's the reinsurance market looking like? And that you don't have to do all of that. Yeah. I think sometimes people are just, you're trying to relate to people on that level yeah. first, get comfortable with them. And then, um, I mean, sometimes they're obviously everybody's different. And sometimes people are just there to maybe, you know, um, speak um, about the markets, which is fine, but you would learn that quickly because you can tell by the body language or maybe they switch the subject quickly. I think with networking or with most things in life, you kind of have to be able to look and read the room a little or the people. And sometimes body language does, uh, um, does tell you that, like if their hands are folded and they're like, mm -hmm. that's not, they're not really kind of yeah. receptive to it, but if they're open and they're looking and they're engaging, then you'll know kind of thing. Yeah, those are great tips. So going with a buddy, a smaller mm -hmm. group, and then really trying to read people's body language. The one that mm -hmm. I would add is thinking about your own body language, oh, um, you know, making sure that you also look sort of more approachable. The The arms is probably the easiest one, trying to keep your arms sort of more open to get more people uh, willing to sort of chat with you. Yeah, that's why I kind of, I like to talk with my hands. So, um, yeah. and I feel that just, you know, <laughs> it feels a little bit more open, um, smile, laugh, whatever the case may be, you know, um, and I know some people may not look always approachable, mm -hmm. um, but I would say some, it's the, the old, you know, saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. I've been told I'm not approachable, but once you approach me, I'm different, right? So, yeah. um, it's just getting over that hump in your nerves, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And Renee, Leah, how about you? What are your suggestions? Do you uh, are is your opening line? Did you see the Canadians game? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not my opening line. It could be, <laughs> never know. But uh, I would say uh, smiling and be open uh, to each other. Like will for sure will help. Uh, like I will say, listen, really, like uh, when I approach a group or the first thing I will do is just look at the people and just listen what they say. And I would try to catch something that who's, who really talk to me. Uh, if the person I see, then the person I have an interest on uh, travel, I will maybe ask about his last trip. Not really like uh, just a simple conversation, simple mm -hmm. uh, discussion, like uh, will feel I will feel more comfortable than if it's going to talk, we are going to talk about something like more deep, uh, then I will be already like more comfortable because I will have first step, uh, like uh, really a first conversation with those uh, people. Um, and I will say like for sure, if you go with someone as the person to maybe introduce you to another person, then that person can introduce you to the next one. Uh, it's really helping uh, to meet new people and I will say on my beginning, like when I began on the industry, I was, I was not, I was a people, like I was a people person, but more like with the, my people, with the person I already knew. Uh, so when I was going to different events, one big mistake I was doing, I was speaking to the person I knew. I was mm -hmm. staying with my group, talking at the same like people at the table. And then I was coming back home and, oh, yes, I had a nice evening, but nothing else. <laughs> like yeah. uh, I, di I didn't have new contact. I didn't introduce myself. So then I start like thinking about it and I say, I have to find a way to feel more comfortable uh, to be like uh, to challenge myself uh, mm -hmm. when I go to those events. So I began with small challenge. So I was going and I was, I need to have like three new people on my LinkedIn. I need to have like three new contacts, like business card or anything like uh, around, but I need to introduce myself. So then I start slowly and 
for sure my goal just keep increasing now it's not it's not three it's five and maybe like ten so but it's really helping me like to make new contract and I would say don't don't stop like to the 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 business you know uh now i have people around me who are busy, like maybe working on different other industry like who are related for sure to the insurance but not really like specific at our industry and uh yeah that's uh that's the thing i'm doing right now and uh it's keep uh it's keep working good like to introduce myself like with the small talk yeah mm -hmm. uh it's really helping me to feel that's more great. comfortable yeah, and I know when we were chatting beforehand, you had shared with me that in the beginning, when you're sort of starting out, sometimes you um, d didn't feel as confident if you were with like an Anglophone group. How did you sort of get over that? Or what would be your advice? Because a, a lot of people would be in that same situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just put myself in danger, <laughs> just like today. <laughs> I look really like, I think I look comfortable, but I still have to uh, prepare myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I I still like, uh, I prepare about what I'm gonna speak uh, and, you know, just try. Nobody will judge you to make mistakes yeah. because they say at least the person tried. So, yeah. and so, nobody will judge you that that's what i've learned and uh people will appreciate then you made the effort that's it so yeah, yeah I, I i keep putting myself in risk <laughs> yeah I, I agree totally agree with that i mean i i know um when people have approached me or have said something in my mind i'm like wow good for them at least they they, they gave it a shot yeah you know mm -hmm. and you know what the right people listen, you're going to have challenges, you're going to meet challenging people, you're not going to get along with everybody. And that's okay. The right people, you'll meet the right people, and they will become part of your circle. Um, I, I always think everything happens for a reason. And you meet yeah. someone for a particular reason, and um, the right ones will will be, you know, um, uh, I guess, will will gravitate towards you. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's great. We're in a risk industry, so you might as well, <laughs> might as well take a few risks in your, your networking as well. Yeah, so that's wonderful. So, you know, setting some goals when you're going to those events and then also looking to meet new people. I remember when I was sort of just starting out, we would go to all different kinds of events as a team and our boss had a rule and that was that we weren't allowed to sit together. So we always had to sit apart. And so, you know, you'd be scanning to see where your coworkers were to make sure that you didn't sit with them because we would get in trouble afterwards if we did sit together. So um, good practice, though, you know, go with a friend, but then split up and you can always come back together if things aren't going so well or sort of compare notes. So on that note, um, I'd like to hear a story of a time when you were networking, you know, externally, maybe with clients or internally with with um, industry representatives that you were either really successful or a time that maybe it did not go as you had planned. It wasn't successful. And maybe uh, some advice that you might offer from those situations. So uh, Renee Lea, we'll start with you. Um, I saw like uh, I'm reading the same in the, I'm reading the chat in the same time and I will go maybe uh, with an answer like, uh, uh, it happens then I was in the situation then I say I would take myself I will give a challenge to myself and the person asked me a question I was like oh I don't know what you're talking about I was like I was like confident like at first and the person asked me like uh, I, I can't remember what was the question and I was like oh now I'm looking like everywhere around, but uh, trying to find help in the looking at the eyes of everyone and like, oh, I'm in trouble. And I, I just told the person that I, I'm sorry, like uh, you lost me, <laughs> you lost me at, with this question. Uh, and they, they are OK, you know, like uh, people like just try. Nobody will try to uh, to put you in the uh, in trouble or put you in mm -hmm. a bad uh, bad situation like they, they will just and maybe you can just reflect the question like uh, 
I don't know, but what do you know about it? <laughs> so yeah. it, you're going to learn now in the same time. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe like uh, someone around you will help. But yes, I've been in uh, in this situ situation, sorry, uh, when I began, where I didn't have the answer for those questions. Yeah. And I think too, sometimes you reflect back on these, you know, maybe slightly awkward situations that you were in and you remember it so well, but the people that you were with guaranteed, they do not remember it at all. You know, sometimes we build things up in our own mind and we think, oh my goodness, that was so embarrassing, but it's really just you who's, you know, thinking that over the, the other people probably don't remember it at all. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing. Um, Tisha, how about you? Um... I mean, to be honest, I, it's been a while. I, I feel like I've had a few challenges within um, in meeting people. Like, as I said, everyone's different and I'm sometimes I go in head first. <laughs> um, but um, I agree when you're hit with challenges um, and you're and you're not sure um, how to respond or you're, or you're like kind of stump. It's okay to be vulnerable and say, you know, um, I'll get back to you. Or to be honest, I, 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 as you know, Renelia said, like, I don't know. Um, and it's and obviously you feel embarrassed or you feel very awkward. Um, but as you said, Carolyn, you, these are great opportunities to learn from. Um, yeah. I, obviously I can say that now. Um, I think as you grow within the industry, as you grow within the with you know grow your confidence and your um you know your comfortable levels um you you tend to address and handle things differently and it's all a process and it's all okay like don't feel like you have to be this perfect person yeah um you know i feel like this new workforce is coming in and obviously their mentality is a little bit different and they take a little bit more risks and they're a little bit more sure about what they want in a sense um but um it's okay if you don't, it's okay if you run into a situation where you're uncomfortable or you don't know the answer. You are one person, you are human. And it's, it's you know, um, I don't know if people um, uh, tend to, you know, kind of reassure people anymore about it's okay for you to be who you are and if you don't know everything because you're not supposed to know everything. And that's too, again, why you have your network, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's great. the person's receptive yeah but um I think everybody's gonna have their challenges and I can't think of one particular story to be honest it's just little ones here and there um um yeah but yes I have felt awkward <laughs> yeah we all have we yeah. all have for sure I know from my own experience going out and trying to establish contacts and things usually I'm pretty chatty and I sometimes if I'm nervous I'll have some questions that I've prepared in advance um, so that I feel a little bit more confident or comfortable and definitely you're not going to know the answer to everything uh, but I've definitely been in situations too where I, I, I feel confident and I you know think oh no problem I'm going to get this contact or this lead no big deal and then sometimes you just don't hit it off with everyone you know that's okay there's always going to be someone else that you can sort of reach out to or sort of try and, and connect with um, that was a question that Carmen had in the chat. So she's saying sometimes she's nervous um, and fearful of those questions if, if she doesn't have the answer, but that's totally fine. Not You're not going to have all the answers. Yeah. And I see in the chat as well that we had a really great reply here. Amy suggests if you don't know the answer, a great opportunity is to set up a meeting with that person and say, hey, I'd love to hear, meet for coffee and hear more from you about this. So that's a really great answer is to you know, take that into sort of that learning opportunity to build that connection with them further. So Carmen, yeah. I think we, we answered your question there. So there was another question I'll bring up. So how do you approach someone in a new department or industry for your own career development, um, but still make it authentic and genuine and not sound like you're just sort of interested in their, their job? So I think that's a good question. You know, maybe there's a, a different department at your organization and you think, wow, that's really interesting area. I'd like to learn more about that. Or, you know, maybe that's something I would like to go into, but you don't want it to come off as sort of threatening. So Tisha or Renee, Leah, would one of you like to jump in and start with that one? I can jump in. I, I don't feel it bad to say then to a person, you know, your job look amazing. 
I would like to do it in the future. Uh, yeah. I, I was, uh, it can be look, it can look funny, but uh, that was, uh, I did that with my boss, like uh, when I began and I was like, I'd like to know more. What is your task? What is your role exactly? Because I, I have a plan, you know, in my career. So, mm -hmm. and we, maybe the person you're talking to also have a plan and will move eventually. So they need like to have a success, like, uh, like a pass uh, to the other person. They have to pass mm -hmm. the ball to another person. Yeah. So just like having people interested on the role, uh, it's pretty amazing. So I think we we can do it like uh, telling as you as you suggest. Like I like what you what you're doing. I think uh, it's something that could interest me for the future. Can I can we spend time together? Uh, you can also like talk to your manager to the person with who you're working and see like. I'd like to see if we have opportunity to do shadowing with different other department. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's always the best thing to know more about the role because we can have like the, the role tie the title, but we don't know exactly what is the day to day of the person. So it's not mm -hmm. when it's uh, when you apply in a role and then you do the interview and you are sitting on you in a new place, then oh. You know, you know what? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really good, like, to ask questions before to know exactly what is what is it and what are the expectations of the role. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, opportunities should be discussed with uh, with the person who is on the role, but with, with also with the manager, with our manager. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you, Renee. Yeah, Leia. I, um, totally agree with what uh, Renee Leia is saying. I um. Listen, I think it's always, I always say to people, it's the way you approach someone is the way you say it. You know, if you're coming across, you know, as um, like, there's no, if you just kind of direct, sometimes people get a little offensive or abrupt, especially if you're, if you're reaching out um, through email, you know, it's very subjective. Um, but if it's more of, hey, you know, I, I'm kind of really interested in what you're doing. I just, I would love to learn more about it. Let's meet for a coffee. Yeah. And if you don't sometimes, you know, always feel comfortable maybe asking your manager, um, that's what your network is about too. If you look maybe like through your LinkedIn um, and maybe um, there's someone you know or someone that you know may know someone that's in that field, you can always reach out to them and say, you know, um, again, I, I'm kind of interested in the field, but I want to learn a little bit more before um, I delve into it. So do you think you could perhaps put me in contact with someone that would be able to maybe is willing to have a coffee with me to explain to me what it's about or what it entails? And obviously you want to listen to different people. You know, as uh, Renelia said that you want to do your research um, because sometimes it doesn't always work out the way. But again, you'll never know truly and fully until yeah. you're in that um, position and um, everybody's experience is different. Because I always say like, Somebody will ask me, oh, how is it at this company? And I say, well, this is what my experience was. Um, everyone's different and everyone's looking for something that's, you know, different. So never kind of compare yourself to someone else. I mean, obviously you have to take those things into consideration. Um, you got to look at the full picture, but um, yeah, you just, uh, that's another great way to use your network. Yeah, that's great. I think asking someone to meet for coffee is so beneficial. Um, whether it's to learn more about their role or what they do, or maybe just about the, the department in general, and to also build some of those connections. Another great thing about that is this is a way for you to practice your networking. So if you are a little bit more nervous in some of those larger scale events with quite a few people, meeting with someone one-on-one -on -one is a really great intro. Always nice, you know, now we're, we're still in sort of this hybrid world. So mm -hmm. uh, nice to meet them in person. But I think most people would also be very willing to book, you know, maybe a, a 20 minute, half an hour Zoom coffee with you or virtual coffee and chat with you online. There's no commute involved in that. So it is quite mm -hmm. easy to do. And um, most people like, who doesn't, you know, a lot of people don't mind talking about the career. People themselves. love to talk about so, themselves, right? Yeah, so, yes. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And I think I think this touches on um, something else that's really important, and that would be to build those internal relationships as well. So whether you're in a client-facing role or you're sort of more 
operations focused, you're still going to be working with other people within your organization. And, uh, you know, you, you want to enjoy your work, right? And a, a good way to do that is to ensure that you're getting to know some of the people that you work with. So building those internal relationships with different departments is really important. And uh, that's our next question. So uh, Tisha, we'll stay with you. Can you share some experiences of how you would build those internal relationships or sort of any tips that you might have for someone who's maybe starting at a new, a new role, a new organization, or perhaps is new to the insurance industry completely? How do you go about building those internal relationships? Yeah, I, um, I feel internal relations are very important, um, especially in the company that you're with, you're in within. So you automatically have your immediate um, internal relationship with whoever your director or team lead or whatever the case may be, and within your team that you work. So never discount that because obviously that's there you're networking at, uh, um, also. Um, I feel like having someone else too within the company that is outside from your team is important because sometimes you want to have um, a, uh, an outside opinion, someone looking looking from the outside in instead of someone that's in it already. Um, and how I kind of, I'll, I'll say how I went about doing it, um, I wait, I absorb, I absorb, I observed a bit um, the different individuals. Um, I kind of asked around, oh, how's your team lead or how's your account exec or, um, you know, uh, the head of your department? What are they like? What are their styles like? So I kind of did a little bit more, a little bit of research and I kind of gravitated to someone that I thought was kind of um, more relatable to me. Um, and then I just kind of one day went into their office and um, said, do you mind if, you know, do you have a second? I, I have an issue that I would kind of like to hear what your opinion is about. Um, and actually, and from that now, I, I, I mean, I don't know she, but I told her, you're like, you're, you're my internal mentor at the moment, whether you know it or like it or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, that's a great way to, to get to know people's styles or someone that you may be, because obviously if you want to try and gravitate to someone that's um, relatable, um, but also sometimes being an opposite doesn't um, always, um, is not always a hindrance because you learn something new and different, mm -hmm. you know, from those individuals too. Yeah. Um, again, it's a, it's a, a same thing um, as a matter of um, networking within your company. Um, and I kind of want to say that there's a difference. Um, there's, and I don't know if a lot of people talk about it, but um, there's a difference between mentor and sponsorship. And I think the two are very important and very different. And I, I don't think a lot of people talk about that per se. You know, your mentor is there to um, to help you, to guide you, to advise you. But your sponsor, um, they're more of they um, they root for you. They they put you. Um, something's happening within the company and they're like oh I know the perfect person for that and they push you towards that and yeah. they they're kind of like your cheerleader and um help you to get into positions or into things that you might not have thought of but you know um probably can make a difference in um so I think it's important to kind of to find the two if possible and um I know we're talking internally but sometimes I think it's also great to be to have those <clears throat> excuse me um externally too. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I, I would also echo your point of, you know, you might be gravitated to the people that are similar to you, but I personally find that I always learn the most from the people who are quite different from me and that I, I wouldn't naturally gravitate to the ones where we have very different styles. Those are the ones that sometimes I uh, feel I get the most value out of building those mm -hmm. relationships with. Yeah. For sure. Right. And it's great to challenge each other back and forth yeah. about different viewpoints mm -hmm. um, again another way of learning right so yeah okay and Renee Leah how about you um, I really like what uh, Tisha said and thank you for the clarification with sponsor and mentor I think it's totally mm -hmm. I totally agree with you uh, and on my side my mentor is I found him like a like asking question and he is totally in a different department. I'm on the distribution side and he is on the technology side, really different approach. Uh, but that's what I like uh, because uh, he don't know anything about the distribution. So mm -hmm. when I ask question, 
it's really about the leadership. And that's where right now I am. And I, I like to ask questions because it's going to have a different view uh, than mine. And that's really helping me. Um, I don't have really a specific speech or I will go really like uh, with the flow. And I think the best thing is just to be comfortable on what you're doing or where you are going, like taking small step, asking small question mm -hmm. uh, and to feel comfortable. You don't like, um, as you said, like previously in one question, you said like when you go to an event, you have all the time, like one person who is louder, who is, will take a lot of place. Don't need to be you. Don't need to, to think then, oh, to be great on, um, on, on, uh, on uh, well, sorry, on networking, I have to be or become this person. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, like you have to follow your, your, uh, what you feel, uh, and just to be in action uh, is a great thing. Um, it's for, sometimes it's really pretty. It's really challenging to find a mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You can ask people like uh, if uh, if they have one, uh, or did or did or they found uh, that person uh, and it can be internal and external, but uh, to have a mentor can be like uh, asking question on uh, on a networking event or networking opportunity with, uh, with the company. I'm also like thinking when I'm sitting in a project, I'm, I'm all the time thinking outside of the box, like who's gonna be in, involved? And I will ask the person, like if it's a person from technology, I will try to take this person on the side and ask directly some question to, uh, and I will maybe ask him like, I, I'm not sure if you are the right person to answer uh, this question, but maybe you know the one. So uh, I ask people like to redirect me like where I should go if possible. Yeah, that's great. I, I feel like I just want to add that I feel like it's okay to have more than one mentor like you don't have to have just one and you can have different mentors for different things as Renee Leah said it could be for just the networking it could be just for leadership um it could be just for everyday life you know um sometimes you know um you know, you navigate a lot in the insurance industry. Um, and it could be someone like maybe you relate to someone that's also trying to build a career, but also as a parent. Um, so it's, it's, I don't feel like you should box yourself into just having one mentor. Um, and it could be for a period of time or it could be for a long, you know, short or long. Um, it's what you make of it and what you put into it. I've had lots of mentors that didn't even know they were my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you you know you're you're thinking, oh, this person is going to be really helpful. I can tell they're very knowledgeable in these areas, and you you can you know connect with them on some of those points. If you are looking for a mentor more specifically on the Insurance Institute website, under the CIP Society section, we have a really great mentor resource guide. So there's resources for you as a mentee. There's resources for the mentor. Um, so I definitely recommend checking that out because lots of really helpful content there that's all available and free for you also. So I'm just looking through the chat and I see a couple of questions that we have come through. So one person has asked about um, some of those sort of questions that you might ask in an event if you're feeling a little bit nervous or you're just trying to get a conversation started. And then someone else has asked, okay, once you've gotten the conversation started, how do you then transition to sort of developing that relationship afterwards? And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a really good point. You know, you, you often go to events, you meet people, it's great. But then what next? What happens afterwards? How do you do that follow up? So I'll answer that first part of the question. And I'll, I'll give you two some time to think about sort of how you're following up. But some starter questions that I find are really helpful. I know it sounds very generic, but the weather in Canada is a good conversation starter. Um, talking about your commute, sometimes I would say if you're if it's someone that you really don't know that well, like local sports teams is a really easy one. I will ask questions about sort of more positive things. So have you gone any vacations? Everybody likes to talk about that. How do you plan on starting you know, what's what's uh, a project that you have upcoming that you're excited about or a vacation that you're planning? 
tell me about your role, tell me about your organization. Those are sort of some easy generic questions. So once you've built a bit of that rapport, how do you then transition that into sort of developing a, a better relationship either after the event or online or, you know, what's sort of your next step? So would one of you like to take this question? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, like anything, really, any relationship, it, you have to cultivate it. Um, and so um, whenever you meet someone, I guess the next steps are what they call um, what best steps are. Um, definitely reach out to them on LinkedIn. Like, you know, obviously LinkedIn right now is the big hot spot and where everybody, you know, um, connects. Um, and reach out. Like I heard someone say the other day, you, you, you got to, um, once you've made that contact, you just don't, you just don't drop it and leave it there. I mean, granted, you're not going to be able to talk to everybody that you've met, but even maybe some ones that are interested in you, maybe some, you know, something that, um, that you kind of gravitate towards, or you want to learn more about the role or learn more about, about the company. Um, those people, you reach out to them once you've uh, met them, exchange contacts and say, hey, great, it was great meeting with you. Um, you know, when you have some time, maybe we could meet up with some coffee, meet up for coffee and chit chat a little bit more, or maybe we could uh, meet up at the next event and hang out and things like that. Um, I feel like you definitely can't just say it was great meeting you, uh, you know, here's a contact and then it goes dead. Um, I mean, that defeats the whole purpose, to be honest, of networking and um, trying to, as I said, grow that net worth, um, your net worth. So yeah. um, I think that's something that's very important that you need to, um, just like after an interview or after you send your resume, it was great chit chatting with you and kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cultivating that relationship. Um, whether that be through email, LinkedIn, like social media, or the next time you see them. Yeah, I like that point of saying, hey, there's this upcoming event. Do you want to yeah. go to it? That's a, that's a really great way to sort of kill two birds with one stone. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Hey, Renee, Leia, anything you'd like to add? I think, uh, yeah, the first step, I, I use LinkedIn for sure, yeah. like to keep the contact with the person. I will say I will avoid Messenger, like some people like try, oh, can I add you in Messenger? On my side, I say no, I like to make the difference in between, like uh, Messenger is one thing and LinkedIn will Do be you my mean professional like one. Face Facebook Messenger? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I like agree to make like uh, like to split both of my uh, mm -hmm. my personal life and my career. So I will just I will work with uh, LinkedIn, and then yes, and I will be transparent also. Like most of the time, I will just be transparent with the person. You know, I like the discussion we had. Can I add you in LinkedIn? And then I will take action. Like uh, just just adding the person, but writing, hi, it was nice to meet you at the event. Uh, are you available if we want to just have a coffee? Like uh, it can be a virtual coffee because for sure example, I want to talk with uh, Tisha, yeah, she's in Toronto, then uh, I cannot con have a, the direct contact, but still we can have other discussion. And I would say like, uh, I don't know where to start, but uh, I really like uh, the discussion we had. Can we keep talking? Can we talk about uh, and small talk? As we said previously, start with small talk, then yeah. talk about what is your career. Uh, can you tell me more about this? And, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. The and I will the first step. Insurance has so many different areas, so many different lines um, that there's always something to learn. So really easy question there. Okay, we're, we're gonna wrap up now. We have two minutes left. So I'm gonna give you each a chance to give a short final point, final suggestion, final tip, final thought from you that you would like to share with the audience. So um, Tisha, we will start with you. <laughs> um, hmm. My final thought. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this one thing. I challenge everybody um, for, you know, obviously, um, we're into the season of lunches and get togethers, um, to at least meet one person, make a new contact, um, and start off with that person and trying to, you know, um, everything that you've learned here or may have picked up or advice, um, to use that and see how that goes. And it's a great way to, um, just start it off 
and it's just one person and um you, and learn from what we can and then maybe that will sometimes it's, it's that first one that's that big hump to get through yeah um so i would say that and also um i'm i'm i like elevator pitches um i know they can be um hard or uncomfortable sometimes but the reason why i like it is because it's 30 seconds um it's hard in the sense of or challenging in the sense that you have to kind of cram a lot of things in 30 seconds but it also teaches you um to kind of find um do the most important points it's a great exercise for yourself. And listen, there's elevator, elevator pitches for business and personal. So um, you can use it anywhere and it's very adaptable, um, but it's a great challenge um, to kind of write down about yourself and some key points that will help you along the way um, for when you meet that person, whether it be an elevator or wherever, outside of the streets, wherever it may be, grocery stores, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, I think that's a great, uh, uh, something that I would always suggest to, to someone mm -hmm. to have that's that great. Uh, and have various, you know, various scenarios and situations. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Renee Leah, how about you? Your final thought. That's great, Tisha. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say like action. It's just like a take action. Uh, a small step can make the big difference so yeah and i like the challenge tisha just said like uh, yeah. just keep one more contact before 22 uh ends and yeah. uh this can be the person who will change uh your career you never know like uh if the, that person can make a difference next year or it can make a difference in 20 years it's just to be like one more contact uh who can make like the biggest difference and uh, I will say I, I've been, I took like different role in my career, like make a plan. If you mm -hmm. think about the dreams like uh, you have, like think about what is really like uh, the, the role you really dreams about. What, what are the, not the name. I don't like to focus on a name, like think about the task you want to accomplish because the name can be different like uh, from one company to another, but really what is the task? What do you want in your career uh, that the people will remember when uh, when you're gonna be retired? Never know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much to you both. Uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed our sort of fireside chat or lunchtime discussion with Renee, Leah and Tisha. Uh, have a great afternoon and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much to you both and have a great